I'm Marcia Ballinger. I'm the Provost and Vice President of Academic and Learner Services. Uh, I'm delighted to see all of you here this evening to join us as we um, really share with you some highlights of what's to come and some of the initiatives that we have underway uh, all around student completion. Uh, you are at the heart of student completion in terms and success. Uh, in terms of what you do day in and day out in your classrooms. We have, um, we have been hard at work this fall semester from a student success agenda and completion agenda, and so the presentations that we have put together for you this evening really um, are a preview of what's to come. Uh, a central uh, focus tonight will be on the new learning management system that we are very, very excited uh, to be introducing. It will be uh, live and required going forward for the next academic year, uh, but you will have a sneak preview of what that is tonight and, uh, and the opportunities that that really will provide each and every one of you with in terms of creating that greater student engagement and having the opportunities to, to communicate that much more uh, succinctly to our students. You know, it's, it's the expectation when we move to the new learning management system that all adjunct faculty will be utilizing uh, Canvas, that's the new system, for your syllabus, for gradebook, because it is um, a priority for us as a higher education institution to assure each one of our students attending here that they have the ability to access um, what their grades are at each point throughout the semester because that's a critical, critical component uh, to their success. We also are going to be sharing with you this evening some updates with regard to our library services, uh, our veteran services. For those of you who have been in College Center over the past two weeks, you may have seen a new area on campus on the second floor of College Center right before you walk into uh, the Bass Library. We have just dedicated a veterans lounge and we have just adopted new policies uh, that our Board of Trustees has endorsed uh, in accordance with some of the new state legislat uh, legislation around the priority for veterans. So, this point going forward, veterans have priority registration on our campus. They have enhanced services. Uh, Dr. Bruce Weigel has been appointed as our veterans liaison for faculty and for students. And we have a whole host of other wraparound services that we're providing. So you'll hear more about that this evening. The third component that you're going to hear about to advance student success is around our new early alert system. Uh, we recognize that there are different uh, momentum points going through a semester when you may see that you have students who are not progressing as well as you think they should be, or you see that they've been absent from class, or they're not turning in their assignments. We're going to share with you that new early alert system. You know, it is our commitment to our community, to our students, to our employers, that we will increase the graduation and completion rates at Lorain County Community College. You are central to that, and we look forward to sharing with you tonight how we hope to uh, move forward with some of these new initiatives. I would like to um, now introduce Barb Schuckman. Uh, most of you know Barb. Uh, she is our adjunct faculty liaison, uh, and she also teaches for us and is the adjunct faculty representative to Faculty Senate. Barb? Well, thanks again for coming. Yes, I am Barb Schuckman. I've been an adjunct here for a lot longer than I'd like to admit. So I've been here for a pretty long time. I'm really excited about the turnout. Thank you so much for coming so we can learn more. I'm sure the new learning management system is, everyone's very concerned about that, interested in that. Um, but first, though, I'd like to introduce um, Helen Abazo Green is going to come up and share some information about the library. And if anyone has a writing component or a research paper component to their class, this would be something very interesting that you should enjoy. So come on up. Thank you. 
No? How's that? Is that better? Okay. Well, my name is Helen DeBalso Green, and I'm one of the reference librarians here on campus. And I want to tell you how thrilled I was when Barbara and Jonathan told me that I could present in front of you. What an opportunity. But then the bad news came. I was told that I have a very limited amount of time to present. How can I demonstrate to you the vast resources that we have, the breadth and depth of everything we have for you in such a short period of time? And the answer is, I really cannot do it adequately. There is no way that I can show you Uh oh, my assistant is falling down here. He's having problems. <laughs> There's no way I can show you the power of one search that simultaneously searches nearly all of our resources at once, hence the name One Search. It searches the College Library Catalog and the Ohio Lake Catalog and over 150 databases simultaneously. These 150 databases contain over 10,000 scholarly journal titles. Many of your retrievals, your results, will have links to full text immediately. If full text is not available to you immediately, then you can order it and the full text will be delivered to your email mailbox within days, free of charge. And that also stands for your students. It's free of charge for them also. Unfortunately, this demonstration will have to wait to another time. So what is it that I hope to accomplish this evening? Well, there are four things I'd like you to remember and take away with you. And if you remember these four things, I will have considered this presentation a success. The first thing I'd like you to remember is to think of librarians as partners with you and your students in the research process. That's what we're here for, to offer support, resources, assistance. All you have to do is ask. Whether that support is walk-in, face-to-face, whether it's in classes, group instruction, and we do come to you, okay? We go across campus as well as going to Wellington, St. Joseph, and Brunswick. We also have student research appointments, which is intensive one-on-one -on -one assistance. So the student can't find anything, you tell him to make a research appointment. Also, we have assignment consultation, and we also do citing assistance. And we do more. We do it all. So that's the first. <laughs> we do. You'd be surprised. That only touches the surface. Okay, that's the first thing. Think of us, think of us as uh, partners. And what is the second thing? Well, in our effort to provide you with all of these resources, we have developed what we call library guides, or live guides for short. These live guides consolidate, consolidate library resources to provide for your se successful research for your course. Okay, these are fully customized individual guides developed in consultation with you. And after we develop them, we send you the URL and you post it on your Angel or your Canvas site. And you tell your students to use these resources exclusively. And if you do that, you don't have to worry about where they're getting their information. It's not where on earth did they find this. Now, I have also done library, <laughs> she's laughing because it's true. Uh, I have done live guides for instructors that I have never met. They were internet instructors. We conducted our business on the telephone or through the email. When the, the live guide was completed, I sent them the URL and they posted it to their angel site. Okay. So, there is no reason why your students do not have righteous resources. So what is the third thing we have? Well, we even have a library guide for faculty, faculty resources. Okay. I'm not going to go through everything that's in here. I urge you to take a look at it just once. But there are two things, two items in here that I do want you to pay attention to. 
and to draw up. The first thing is contact us. You know, we are the easiest people on campus to get a hold of. I mean, we just sit there waiting for you to come and ask us a question. Really, you know, use us here. Okay. Uh, in fact, we're so uh, eager to have you contact us, we have posted on your live guide, the faculty resources, the many ways to reach us. Now, of course, the first one is to call us, and I guarantee you will get a human voice. Guarantee that. The second thing is to text us. We now have texting capabilities. So if you have a question, you text us, and I assure you, you will get an authoritative answer. You don't have to worry about the information. And then third, of course, you can always email us, and of course, you can always come in face to face. Now, the other thing, you are all familiar with personal bankers, right? Did you know that you have a personal librarian? Yes. Except we don't call them that. We call them... Oops. <laughs> Can't get good help these days. I'm... Uh-oh. Uh, hold on. Uh-oh. No, we can do this. Go back. We can do this. We're good. Okay, there we go. Okay, we don't call them... All right, who hired her? I mean, <laughs> there we go. Okay. Uh, we don't call them personal bankers or personal librarians. We call them library liaisons. Every division has at least one librarian assigned to it as a library liaison. You should know who the librarian is to your division, who the library liaison is. We are very helpful and useful people to know. You should know us by first name. So that when you call with your specific questions in your specific discipline, you can ask for us by name. So, let's see. The two items, contact us and library liaison. So, what are these four things I want you to remember? Well, first of all, of course, that we are uh, partners. in successful research. Don't hesitate to uh, get a hold of us, okay? The second is we have library guides that we want you to post on our Angel or Canvas site, okay, so that your students have access to the best resources and you don't have to worry. The third thing is we have a faculty resources live guide. Be sure to go here at least once so that you can put those numbers into your cell phone at least once. Find out who your uh, library liaison is and develop a working relationship with that librarian. It's very nice to know, you know, one-on-one -on -one you call and you ask for us by name. But then I did say that there were four things I wanted you to remember. And for the fourth thing, we now have a mobile app that you can put on your iPhone, your smartphone, your Android, and you will ac have access to all of these resources that I'm telling you about. And after you download it, this is what it will look like. Now, I want to say this is free also. It's also free. And you know, OneSearch is prominently displayed right there for you to use. All of that power in your hands, and all you have to do is access it. So the four things, please remember. We are partners. Think of, you as, think of us as partners, support staff, helpers. We have live guides for posting on your Angel or Canvas page, even if your internet's teacher. There are, the internet teachers, are really, this is very useful for you. And we have a faculty resource guide. You want to go there at least once, take a look at what we have, and put the contact information into your cells. Do know who your library liaison is, and be sure and download the mobile app. Now I think that this has been fast and furious. So I hope I've raised more questions than I've answered. That's really part of what I wanted to do. Hopefully I have. And if I have, contact a librarian. We'll be very glad to answer them to the best of our ability. And uh, before I leave you with one parting thought. Yes, Susan. Our dean. Uh, Rita Blanford, one of the adjunct librarians, and Bethany Miller, adjunct librarian.
Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Jonathan and Barbara for having me and my able assistant that <laughs> left a little brevity in the, in the presentation. And this is my last thought. Studies indicate students who make use of library resources and services have higher retention rates and GPA. And we all know that high retention and good grades equal completion. I think enough said. <laughs> Thank you, Helen and Bethany. I appreciate that. Um, next up is going to be Carrie Delaney. She's going to be talking to us a little bit about some of the veteran services here on campus. So, Carrie, come on up. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Uh, my name is Carrie Delaney. Uh, by trade, I'm an academic advisor, and through my 12 years with this institution, I've had the pleasure of, of going in many different directions and progressively getting more involved in our students and their lives. Um, at present, I work with um, adult learners, our, our veterans, and what I try to do uh, with our group and our team is to make sure that our adult learners, and specifically our veterans, um, are um, afforded the best service that we can offer here at Lorain County Community College. We are a military-friendly institution, and we take pride in that. Um, I actually was not supposed to be here. Rose Swigel was supposed to be here, was unable to make it. Um, uh, Dr. Ballinger had mentioned that there are a number of initiatives that are going on in the state of Ohio. One of them is the House Bill 488. And essentially, if you take a look on your tables, except for these two tables, because Gary did not count properly, um, you will see uh, House Bill 488's um, kind of end result. Um, we have a policy. Uh, that the institution, I believe, has taken to the board and has been approved. I hope I'm not in error in saying that. And essentially lays out the various services that are offered to our veterans outside of um, what we do for our everyday normal students. Um, first would be something along the line of uh, priority registration. Our veterans do not have to wait if they're new students. They do not have to wait to register. They can come in day one. And I'm moving this thing. I'm sorry, I'm moving the podium. <laughs> it's going off. I apologize. Um, the uh, second thing is uh, making sure that we have services, wraparound services to assist them. Uh, third piece, if I'm not mistaken, let me just take a look real quick, would be um, making sure that we have, uh, it's not part of the House bill, but it's highly recommended, the lounge. Dr. Ballinger mentioned that we dedicated a lounge on November 11th. We're very proud of that, and we are presently working on programming surrounding that so that our veterans have a sense of pride and a place to go so that they can commiserate and share stories. Uh, but in that lounge and in the whole veterans process, we are developing um, a calendar of events for our veterans. This could include, because we have a lot of veterans that are homeless that we don't know about. They're in our classrooms. We have veterans who don't have food um, and are too proud to ask for help. Um, we have veterans that don't know that they can go to school for free. Um, we need to get our veterans to our certifying officials. So what this uh, bill has also helped do is um, require us to identify an individual, and in this case, this is Bruce Weigel, to be our faculty advisor, to spend some time in our veterans' lounge to work with um, our veterans and talk to them and make sure that they're getting the services that ne they need. We're also partnering with the Lorraine County Veterans Services. We're looking at the VFWs. So it, it's still new to us. Uh, we've done this on a regular basis, not as if we haven't been taking care of our veterans, but we're doing more now to make sure that we handle the influx of returning veterans from um, Iraq and Afga Afghanistan. Um, the other thing that I am asked, been asked to also mention um, is there will be some professional development, uh, an area on, I believe, January 14th. Um, and this is for um, our, um, our faculty to focus on the needs of the veterans to be sensitive to uh, what they're going through and hopefully um, will help guide us a bit better. Uh, 
Thank you. Thanks, Carrie. Uh, and I will share, I have a veteran in my 12 o'clock class, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and he came in dragging his backpack, and he said to me, you know Miss Barbara, that's what he calls me, and he's younger than I am, but a very polite man from Alabama. Uh, you know Miss Barbara, you're making me miss the free lunch. I'm like, w why? Because your class is right now, there's a free lunch, free pizzas for veterans over, and I go, by all means, sweetheart, go. He went, and he came back like 15 minutes later to the class, so he's getting more aware of what um, you offer here on campus for veterans, so that was great. Mark Hicks, so graciously is a Agreed to talk with us tonight about the early alert system. So come on up, Mark. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name's Mark Hicks. Um, I've actually been teaching psychology for about 17 years now, uh, and I'm also uh, one of the functional analysts uh, over in enrollment and financial services. Uh, kind of my piece for tonight is our early alert system. And the idea is that, as Dr. Ballinger stated, it's really all about completion. Now, a lot of tonight is going to be talking about the technology. My part's a small piece of that. Um, Canvas is a big piece of tonight. But student uh, completion, student retention, student success begins and ends with you guys. Okay. You know your subject matter, and you can tell when students are motivated. You can tell when they're not. You can tell if they're getting the material or if they're not. It begins and ends with you. But if you would like student services to get involved and uh, help out with an issue with a student, this is one mechanism uh, that we have to do that. It's called our early alert system. And you all have access to it. Uh, basically, it's just mycap.lorraineccc.edu. And like I said, you all have access to this. Your username and password is your network username and password. Uh, so it's the same login that you use to get into your computers um, in your department. Now, my screen is going to look a little bit different uh, than what you have access to. Uh, you're only going to have a couple buttons up there. But basically, if you notice a student who isn't doing too well in your course, maybe they have uh, stopped showing up, um, maybe they have some type of issue going on, uh, just go to Early Alert. You can pull down your course there, click on the student, and you'll see some basic information about the student, their ID, their email. If you want to uh, put in like the student's uh, personal email so that, you make sh that, so that you make sure they actually get uh, the early alert, you can type that in. Uh, campus, you can select which campus the student is at. If they're uh, uh, internet in an internet course, it'd be distance learning. Select the reason we chose for uh, general uh, categories, um, you know, if the students have any issues with attendance, if they've just stopped showing up, uh, you can put that in, or participation, tutoring, uh, or even if you want to say hearty well done, you could do that as well. Uh, you just type in your comments there. Uh, please don't sleep in class. There we go. Um, and then you just hit send. I won't send it to uh, Kyle here. Uh, he's a pretty good student, so I won't send it to him. Um, that will show up in his LCC email. If you copied him in the, in the CC line, it'll show up in his personal email if you have that. But maybe most importantly, uh, this will show up, this will pop up over in student services. So if there's some issue going on with the student that uh, you want us to kind of get involved with and help out with, Send an early alert, um, and uh, we can uh, get involved. But with that said, remember, uh, you guys are on the front line. Um, so student success begins and ends uh, with you guys. Yes? Are you saying that it will automatically send a copy to student services? Yes, it will automatically send a copy to student services. It will also it'll send a copy to the student so that the student realizes what the issue is. 
and you'll also get a copy uh, sent to your email as well for your records. Oh, well, that's the, kind of the idea of uh, sending it to us, so, yeah. Um, oh, okay. Well, then you don't have to use it, you know. So, I mean, you can always use Angel to contact the student and, and stuff like that, so. Or Canvas, as we will find out. Well, we had a bunch of them, and then we decided not to put every possible reason. Uh, so I would say tutoring would be the, the appropriate uh, selection criteria. Yeah. Uh, actually, it's active right now. Um, you can make use of it if you wanted to. Cool. Uh, we rolled it out um, to uh, faculty during faculty development days back in August. Um, yeah, so it, it's, uh, it's relatively new, and it's my understanding with Canvas, it's going to be integrated a little bit differently, but it's going to be the same concept, though. Yeah, con con yeah, connect with me tomorrow. We'll talk about that. So. Anything else? Man, I get all the questions. You know, that's not fair. <laughs> Anybody else? All right. Um, so I'll turn it back over to Barb. Gee, Mark, after a few questions, you just bolt. Um, Thank you so much, Mark, for sharing Eiler with us. Uh, so you can all go in at our table, some logging in, and check in and see what you can do with your students. Want to use it? Great. If you don't want to use it, I guess you don't have to use it. Um, so now, distance learning team. I see Tammy and Susan and Jan and Luz, and you're not part of the team. But I see you sitting there with them, so you must be welcome with that team. So Tammy, come on up and educate us about Canvas, please. Oh. The glorious anniversary of our commitment to the legacy of our chosen learning management system. We have successfully maintained the status quo protected by the safe, enclosed system that is keeping us secure from the variances of innovation and foreign technologies. Divergence from the complexity we have embraced will only lead to idleness. We are one people, one win, one resolve, one cause. Our LMS is sufficient for our needs. We must resist change.
Thank you. Change is good. <laughs> good. Change is good. And Canvas, you are going to love it. Next slide. So the agenda for tonight is we will, I'll be doing introductions in just one minute for the DL team and one member of our LMS faculty ad hoc committee. No, that's fine. Then why are we leaving ANGEL? The LMS search process and implementation. So why did we go to Canvas? A course demo in Canvas. The Canvas implementation, important dates, and timeline. And then we'll have a Q&A for you. So introductions, Susan Paul, distance learning. Tammy Masick, distance learning. Luz Rivera, distance learning. Thank you. Luz Rivera, distance learning. Mike Substelny is currently in the Board of Review, and George Taylor is making his way up from the North Ridgeville campus. Jan Thompson is a member of the LMS Faculty Ad Hoc Committee, and other individuals who could not be here tonight are Beyond Park, Larry Atkinson, Chris Sheets, Aldina Francisco Harris, Lee Schrader, adjunct faculty, Mary Grady, Krista O'Neill, and Mary Jo Di Gian Domenico. <laughs> Great. Okay, so why do we need to leave Angel? Blackboard purchased Angel. Angel is now on operational support, and the DL team had been on full support. We now are experiencing more and more browser issues with Angel, and I'm telling you now that Angel is on hospice. Hospice, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so our contract with Angel ends July 15th of the coming year. So there were a number of reasons why we're moving over. Luz. Again, my name is Luz Rivera. Can you guys hear me okay? I wore my higher heels just so I can reach the microphone a little bit better. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, well, I'm going to give you guys a broad overview of the implementation and the process we've gone through thus far just to update everyone. In March, the distance learning team met with Faculty Senate Executive Committee. We discussed the LMS search process that we wanted to take, but we also wanted to get feedback from them. Um, as we moved forward, and then at this time we asked for volunteers for the LMS faculty ad hoc committee so that we can have input and involvement from various divisions. We then brought in vendors uh, for the LMS. We brought in four vendors. Every, we sent out everyone emails to make sure people knew when these presentations were taking place. All the presentations were recorded. We also sent a link out afterwards for those that couldn't attend the presentations so that they can see what each LMS had to offer. And we also, the ad hoc committee, also dissected these all summer. We just tried to be very transparent in making sure everyone had all the information. We put a lot of the information in ANGEL. We sent those links out. We just really wanted a lot of input from everybody. The committee worked all summer. We had four LMSs we were dissecting. We broke it down to the top three. Um, we had those same vendors come back out, recorded more information. The LMS committee did a final ranking with rationale and voted on the LMS they thought best fit the needs of this institution. This was the charge of the LMS committee. The committee recommended Canvas, and we went back to the Faculty Senate 
And we also met with Dr. Ballinger and presented her the top three LMSs as well. Um, from there, we had, you know, presented everything to administration, faculty senate executive committee, and then the negotiations went through for Canvas, which we are very excited about. We had lots of input across campus with, you know, this process, the timeline, how we're going to go about training. We are working heavily with marketing and other areas to make sure we cover all our bases with making sure the campus community is aware with all the updates the material, information, just so that faculty, adjuncts, students, everyone is just up to date constantly on everything. So that's where we're at right now, and Tammy's going to go more in depth with the training aspects and more of the implementation details. Jan's going to come up and um, and now we just give you, since Jan was on the committee, um, she's going to give you an idea what, what kinds of things attracted us to Canvas. Well, I wanted to start out by saying I was an adjunct for 14 years. This is my 33rd year at Lorain County Community College. This will be my fourth transition to a new LMS system. So I've been there, done that. Um, when we transitioned to ANGEL, I found it to be a really easy system to use. It was very intuitive, and I find Canvas to be very, very similar in that it's got things in about the places you'd expect to look for it and all of that. So uh, I just want to tell you that I have been there many times, and that was part of why I wanted to be on this committee, because I wanted to pick an LMS that I thought would meet the needs really well. So. There are a lot of things that I think you will find um, to be very helpful in Canvas. One of the things is that um, you can take a package from Angel, you package up your course, you take it to Canvas and you say, I have an Angel package I would like to upload, and you tell it the dates of the semester that you're going to be teaching. It will upload the package, it will automatically reset your dates for you so that you don't have to go back, like an angel, you know, every semester when you copy your course over, you have to go in there to the date manager or you have to go to every, it'll do that for you. But there are some cool things that allow you to adjust dates if you said, oh, wait, I don't want that to end on Friday, I want it to end on Saturday. So it's got a lot of cool stuff like that. Um, so we can take our packages from angel and not have to necessarily rebuild our courses. And also it has, uh, places for uh, the syllabus and the calendar and assignments and everything like you're used to in Angel. It's just going to look a little bit different, but it's got all the same basic stuff and it works pretty much the same way. It has a wonderful um, help link to it. They have, um, their pages have written instructions and pictures pointing to this is where you're supposed to see and if you click here this is what you see and for a visual learner that's really wonderful for me. Um, so with this summer while I was playing with it I spent a lot of time looking up things and I went oh okay I can go do that and then I would go do it and it was great. Um, there are some things that when you transfer your course in you're going to have to reset. For example my courses have a lot of internal links in them. Those will all have to be rebuilt but it's a matter of highlight what you want click over here on the thing you want it to go to, done, move to the next one. So it's a very easy fix. There are a couple of things that you'll be able to do um, to your current ANGEL course to make it come in even better. So there will there'll be a, a helpful hint sheet that we'll be providing to you uh, December or January when we do additional training um, that will allow you to fix up your ANGEL course before you package it and send it over to Canvas and then there won't be as much to fix when it gets there. So we'll get that out to you. Also, I um, viewed this on both my computer, I have a Mac, I have viewed it on a PC, I viewed it on my iPad, I viewed it on my phone, and it all looks exactly the same, which is something very different from the way Angel operates. My iPad and phone inter you know, interaction with it was very different, but it's exactly the same no matter what uh, type of device you're using, and that's something that I found really interesting. It's got some exciting things that you can do as far as grading. You can download a bunch of stuff to grade and do it offline and then upload it back in and all the grades will automatically go back and all the comments that you might have put in will go back. 
It has um, places where you can record. So you could decide, I would like to provide an audio fee feedback to my students. And I can just record it right in there and say, Joe, I thought you did a really great, great job with this, but you could have done better with that. And it uploads, and then when Joe goes to look at his grade, he can just click on that, and it gives him some information back. You can actually, I believe you can do some writing on the screen, but I haven't played with that. So you could actually do some editing on your thing, maybe just with your finger on your iPad, and then you can upload that, and they can see the editing in the chat. So some really exciting things that we didn't have an opportunity with with Angel, and I think you'll like that. So th when um, you log on, there's a, a home page kind of template that allows you to uh, put together at the top, it'll have, of course, your course. But then each of these weekly uh, pictures that you see up here represent links to a module within the course. So it could be a weekly module, it could be a topical module. We're going to put together a database of images, and we're going to be working with our graphic design folks to do that so that you can have lots and lots of images to pick from when you're setting up your um, intro page for your, your courses. So lots of stuff that you can do for that. And then this um, shows you, here's another course that's already been put together. And up in the upper right here, you see what their homepage looks like. And then down below is the calendar, which is very much like Angel. But one of the things that you'll see when you in, you know, bring in your Angel course or when you copy a course from one Canvas section to another, it'll copy, you know, put stuff into the uh, grade book, or excuse me, the calendar. And if I decided, you know what, I don't think I want that on Wednesday, I want to move it to Thursday, I just grab onto it and I slide it over to where I want it, and then it'll automatically change all of the dates to anything that's associated with that particular assignment. So now I don't have to go back through to my date manager and change all the dates again. I can just say, hey, I'd like to have that one more day, or oh, I didn't need it on this day, I need it on that week and I can just slide it in the calendar and it automatically does all of that. So it is definitely a much easier thing to work with. There is a syllabus feature here, and so you can plug in your syllabus template, and then anything that you put into the calendar automatically goes into the list here on the syllabus. So you wouldn't necessarily even have to type that schedule in. It shows up right here on Angel just because you told it there's an assignment on this particular date. So there are some things that have not been available in Angel that I think you'll really, really like. And most of the stuff that you found in Angel is also available here in Canvas. So I played around with these things all summer, and I just really fell in love with Canvas. I'm very excited that we're going to it. So. I, mean, I have to say, this is such a cool feature because as you are building courses, you are also building the schedule and building your syllabus. And so I think that those kinds of things are going to make your work processes um, so much easier. Um, so a tech support call in our office right now goes like this. <clears throat> Tammy, I'm having a problem with the da-da-da in Angel. And then we solve that and you say, by the way, what's going on with Canvas? And when am I going to have access? And I'm really worried about it because I'm teaching this summer. So what I want to do is just give you an idea of the process, okay? First of all, we are going to be migrating all courses. Uh, and we are going to start summer, uh, May 26th, this is the start of summer semester. All courses will run in Canvas because we say bye-bye to Angel on July 15th. And so we want, now we have a plan to uh, work toward that date. So first of all, how many of you know right now you are teaching this summer? Okay, good, I see some online folks. So um, especially online blended instructors, but keep in mind, we're gonna work with all modes of delivery. All modes of delivery will have some uh, presence in Angel, in Canvas. and we will be migrating your courses from Angel. So starting with today, um, we are, are giving you some of the basic information, but we are really kicking off uh, Canvas on December 15th at the Faculty Development Day in the morning. So that is going to be where we have full time and we're inviting um, adjunct faculty as well to um, come for the overview the kickoff, and then we're going to have some hands-on training uh, sessions in computer labs. 
um, during that time. So that's going to be where we really give you a lot more information about how you can get a course and how you can get training and, and some of the processes. Um, we currently, distance learning, we're currently meeting with Canvas and we have our implementation people coming out on Mondays. So we're trying to get to stay a step ahead to get everything organized um, so that this is smooth. Okay, so what we're kicking off on December 15th, we're kicking off um, training. We're going to kick off also providing you each with a studio course or a sandbox course. So we thought a studio course would be more um, akin to, um, to Canvas. We're also going to help you prepare your angel courses. Um, so some of the tweaks that you can make to help it mi to make it migrate better, we'll be working on that. And then in January, during development days, we are also going to um, start running some workshops. We're also going to have meetings with um, any managers of the LORs and the CRAWs. I think that's mostly the uh, full-time folks, but I know a lot of you benefit, and I've had some questions about those LORs. Okay, so we will migrate all courses from Angel. Canvas is going to help us do that. That will happen um, most likely start in the late January time frame, um, and it will be a gradual process, so we're working on that. <clears throat> the, the, one of the big dates is April 1st, where we plan to uh, create student accounts. We'll have the summer courses built, summer and fall courses built, and we will introduce students to Canvas um, with an orientation and a Daltra Everybody knows about the Daltra, right? We're a student orientation course. We don't know what it'll be called yet, but we'll have something like that. And then we'll run courses starting in summer. Okay, so I know that's a lot to take in, but we, um, we want to you know, walk you through that process. So that's the visual of the timeline, and some of the things I just said are also here. Okay, so some of those key dates Okay, and on the right here, um, some important information. So on the 15th, you're, you are all going to get a, um, a studio course that you can play in. Then you can request us to migrate content into that studio if you wanna see what your course looks like in Canvas. And I know a lot of you do, especially um, some of you online folks. You use testing a lot and you really wanna have a good sense, and I see I see Jim nodding. Yes, Mr. Hunt will we'll be right on it. Mr. Coulson, too. <clears throat> so we will, um, we will work with you, um, especially those of you who have fairly complex courses. Okay, so I wanted to give you, um, we will, we're working on, with marketing, on a, web, a transition website. Okay, so you have access to all of these dates and all of this information. Okay, but we are literally, like I said, working a step ahead of, um, of you, but we're getting there. Um, so where do you go for more information? We will have a Canvas website for you. Um, we will send that out to you by email. We'll also work with Barb, who has a, a good mailing list, and your division offices. And then on December 15th, we will have a lot of things um, available on that day. If you can't make it on that day, we're also going to have a you know, similar information going in January. Okay, so, and also Mike in our t on our team just came, came here, so he's, anything Mike that you want to add? No, you covered it all. <laughs> okay, let's open it up for you t for questions and everybody on our team can help with this. You want to come up there? Yes, hi. Um, the, in Angel, you can export your course, okay? And there's a certain format that you export it. It's a zipped file, and that zipped file can then be imported into a Canvas course shell as an, as an Angel export file. It'll have everything but student data and anything that has been inputted by the students, but any of your, like all of your files and discussion questions and things that you have up there, it'll all come over. It just won't have any of the 
personal student data and stuff for the semester. So we have found that, that announcements do not come over. So um, that is, we're going to double check on that, but we have not found that particular thing. That's the only thing that we know of. Yes, Terry. That's a good question. Um, we have right now, what do we have? Three years, Mike? Mike's sort angel of the manager. Archives? Yeah, Mike's, Mike has the angel he's, archives. He's got angel archives going back to the beginning. Uh, we've got those files, but, but as far as being able to open them in angel to look at them, that goes away when angel goes away. We, the archives that we have, yeah. Right. Um, we're going to go back three years, right? I, we, what we're, I think what we're going to do, um, we were talking about going back three years, but we're also, yes, yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. Um, what we're going to do is most likely ask each of you to make sure we have all the courses that you do want, okay? It's going to be a bit of a process, but um, we, we can bring over 5,000 courses. So I think that takes us through, I think we figured three to, somewhere in three to four years. But there might be some of you don't need three years worth of the same course, right? And yeah, I'll only be bringing one year over probably. Can you bring us on that? We're working on it though. I, we hear you loud and clear on that. So uh, if I'm understanding correctly then, you're saying that if I had courses from, say, last year, the year before, that I want to be able to access the content from time to time, I would indicate to you what courses those would be, and then you would take care of that. We'd bring that over into Canvas, yes. OK, mm -hmm. thank you. Yes. And two things. It sounded like you said when it goes uh, July 15th, whenever it's gone, if you don't have it done by then, it's gone. Is that correct? The archives will exist. It's the export. Right. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're a backup. All right, so we need to get it done by so July 15th. For example, your question banks are one of the things. If you want to use your angel question bank in Canvas, fix them in the angel. Okay. Because they get to use the export in Canvas, otherwise they will be almost useless. All right, and then the other question is, with the IBDL classes and your different locations and so forth, is that all going to be able to be synced like it is now? Yes, synch uh, synchronized, yes. Mm -hmm. No problem in synchronized. Actually, it'll be easier. That's um, good. Yes, the, it, Canvas has a parent course structure, so in your case, you could have an, um, your parent, um, tell me again what you teach, math. So you'd have your math course, and then you'd have your sections underneath that parent course. So it's going to make it much easier. Yeah, we'll, we'll get into the structure more, but it's really nice. Mike, I have one question about those, um, the Angel archives that you have. Those are not zipped files, right? Those are just a backup? They They're back. So they are ones that you could upload no. into Canvas? They don't go well. Okay, yeah, so. They, 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 they Those are backup. Well, okay, well, I just wanted to know yeah, because yeah. that would be another thing. Yeah. If you, you maybe you can't open it, but can you upload it and then do something in, in, in Canvas with it? So it doesn't sound like probably not a good bit. idea. It's, <laughs> somebody's going to want to do it sooner or later. Okay. Did I hear you say that all the information that you saw through Angel on a PC, you will now see the identical thing on an Apple product or iPad? Oh, I've always seen it all on an, I've always been an Apple person, so <laughs> I've always been able to see it on my Mac computer. I've been able to see the same thing as what I see on a PC. But for Canvas, I saw exactly the same screen for my iPad, for my iPhone, uh, okay. for your Android. It's gonna look exactly the same no matter what device you're using. Uh, excuse me. One of the questions, or one of the features that Blackboard has, was to be able to open a particular task or, or or something for one single student, as opposed to opening it for all. Angel doesn't have that capability. Will Canvas have that capability? Yes. 
Yes, I think it's a group. Um, yeah, oh, I've never been able to find it. Would you please go over the uh, technical requirements for my home computer? Can I use uh, Internet Explorer? And if so, which section of it? Um, they told, I remember the Canvas telling us that it was browser-based, not computer-based. And so as long as you have an updated browser. But I seem to recall that Internet Explorer was not one of the supported ones. But you could download Firefox um, and use that one. I use that with Angel all the time. So I think it's just a certain version of Internet yes. Explorer. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's just a certain version of Internet Explorer. I'm not sure which one it is. But they seem to update when all the other browsers update. They're pretty, it's a cloud, so everything kind of get up, it's updated together. I think that it's IE9 that's not compatible. That's, one of them. that's the one we have loaded in most of our computer labs. But anyways, <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry. Um, but um, so I think IE11 is fine. And then any of the other ones, Eileen, are just fine. Is there any... Uh capacity to be able to do podcasts on here instead of making them go to my campus? Ooh, yes, good question. Um, there, the, <laughs> uh, you have the ability to, so when you talk about like announcements, you have the ability to do a short video anywhere in Canvas in an announcement. When you're grading a paper, you can do a video uh, feedback, which is something that um, Dan Cleary had experimented with um, in a different format. As Did you say video or auditory? Video and audio, both. Okay. Yes. Um, as far as a longer podcast, we're still working on that. George um, and our team is, is working on what the audio video strategy is for a longer. Lots of options, though. Any other questions? Oh, okay. You were saying as far as the formats with all the different, like I have an iPhone. Part of the problem is it'll lock out a lot. You only can scroll so far. And then well, if you do the PDA, if you do a PDA, hit the PDA button, it'll make it work. Do better. you mean with Angel? With because Angel. in Canvas, it's a lot more mobile friendly. Well, that's why. So I you mean, won't get that. Angel you'll, you is can a nightmare keep scrolling. With, with the, yeah. Yeah. Okay. It is it's a nightmare. Yeah. Yeah. All Just right. Scrap the. But Canvas has two apps. They have uh, the general. There's the general Canvas app, and then there's Speed Grader. So both of those are, and they work really well. And I've used it on my iPad, and you're right, you can scroll seamlessly. With Angel, you can't. It kind of stops after a while. It cuts you off. It's a nice feature. Um, if I heard you correctly, uh, you would like us to be migrating by late January from Angel to? We are going to start yeah. moving the courses. Um, Canvas has to do this as a process, so we will start moving those um, in mid-January, and that means we'd like you to, you know, be ready to clean up your courses in the meantime. So that's kind of your first task. Could I have a date? Yes, definitely. The, the, the plan is, as it is now, that everybody will have their own studio course in December. If you wanted to start playing in your studio course, if you wanted to start building your course from scratch, or go off on your own and export your angel course and import it there, you can do that in December. Yeah. Yeah, we will give you instructions on that. Because I'm just show of hands, because I think I know who some of you will be. Who wants to work on this over the holidays? I knew it. <laughs> okay, and so we're hearing that a lot. You know, that you, when you have that time that you want to be able to do that. So we're going to try to give you the tools for that. Oh, you done? So you'll ask us which sections we want you to send. Yes, right. So you may only bring one version of each of the, everything you teach over. Well, let's say that you had um, your, your geography class and, then, and you just had a textbook change. You maybe only want, you know, last two or three right. semesters worth. Yes. I am, uh, this question goes to uh, a class that will be offered in the spring. If I have a class in Angel which is going to be offered in the spring, can I also take that class 
and enter it into Canvas and play with it at the same time that it exists in Angel? Yes. Yes. Yes, in your studio course, Rita, you could. Um, so let's say you get your course all developed in Angel, and then either we'd work with you to export and import it into Canvas, and then you could do that simultaneously. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Now, on your own, I mean, we wouldn't have students in that necessarily, but. No, you got to have one left. Can you only put one course in the studio and do your studio course? Susan? Susan. I'm not loud, I guess. I always thought I was. One course in the studio course, yes. Oh. If we mess with the studio course, will you move, can you move it into a real course? Yes. Easily. Okay. The course copy in this is very nice. easy, so. I teach three different courses, so when I'm done with one, I move it out, I can start another one in that studio? I think one of the things we're working out is most likely we'll take your request for additional studio courses. We're not going to stop progress. You want to work? and you want to work on three or four courses, you know, we'll, we'll work with you on that, definitely. I have a question. Um, you said December 15th for the development days. We'll be able to attend that. How do we go about signing up for that? There will <laughs> be an announcement coming from the provost's office with an RSVP. So it will be for full-time and adjuncts as well. Thank you. Do you guys have any more questions? Pick the brain. Okay. I'm only using the microphone, so when it's recorded and it's posted on the website, people can hear the questions. So the D December 15th date, um, will it only be that day because that day I'm on an airplane, so. <laughs> That's what we want to be. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I need, you know, to know if it's just that day for the initial training. We're, we're just going to kick it off that day, Sammy, but we will make sure that anybody who's not there is informed in a number of ways, okay? So Wonderful. you will have, what's, what's going to happen is you'll be able to log into Canvas using your LCCC network login. Um, logging in is just going to be easier, we'll and in. from there you will have the training course, the studio course, that kind of thing. So, um, okay, we'll, thanks. We'll, we'll and make you sure will you have an opportunity in January, Sammy, as well. Great. Yeah, we're already talking about a variety of um, different training sessions, probably all through spring, on and off different topics. And like, oh, I'm struggling with my grade book, so maybe we'll just have something devoted to grade book and something devoted to how do I load up files. So we'll try to provide a lot of um, training along the way. Both online, if you, are, if you are on an airplane or you're somewhere else over the holiday, and um, on campus. Some of you prefer to, to, to be on campus. Is there a way to contact the students to their cell phones? You know, not oh. in Canvas instead of just email like an angel? Yes. Yes, there is. Yes, they have, um, there's notification settings. So students can actually post, for instance, um, discussion posting. They can see it on their cell phone. They can respond back from their cell phone. They can get alerts. They can set it up so that it alerts them that they have a Microphone. They can actually, there's a setting there where they can actually set it for alerts. And the same with the instructor with grading it when it comes in. So it's, they're very mobile, it's really nice. So everything in my repository, go over to, go over to Canvas. Uh, repository, did you say? Yeah. Um, no, actually, Canvas has a new, it's uh, a new learning object repository. And so we are just meeting, we need to meet with them to see how that fits, but then we'll meet with all the faculty who are repository managers or whatever to get that um, migrated. Because okay, I do have everything in my repository. And, and is, do you say your personal or the psychology? No, personal one. Oh, okay. I also wanted to mention that um, Canvas plays a lot better with the publisher type oh, yes. other things. 
and that like if you're using my math lab or something you can link it up to canvas and it'll automatically post the grades into the grade book so there's no issue of oh i got to post them here i got to post them there um, <laughs> so it that's a, a really nice feature that we didn't have previously with angel so i think that'll be something you guys will appreciate will there be any special issues for the course resource archives um, that are out there will they go over without any problems um, you know, the course resource ar archives are typically, the online ones, are typically a learning object repository and a community group. So the community groups will come over as basically a course. And then we're going to work with all the CRA, CRA managers about the learning object repositories, whether you want it to be a course or you want to use um, Canvas's new LOR um, system, which is a very open system, and so we're trying to get a... Uh, feeling. This is a very different um, company. They're very open. I mean, we have seen, I can't tell you how many schools, their training courses, their resources, every people just put all of their, their uh, resources out there. So it's going to be fun. We plan on, plan on having a lot of fun with this. <laughs> you guys have anything Let's go else? to Utah with us. I mean, you know. And we're just trying to figure out how to get the flamethrower, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> and so. Anything else for the distance learning team? Okay. Thank you so much, everybody. Yes, thank you. So, um, listening to the presentation on Canvas, a couple of things um, kind of got me fired up in that like pathetic teacher way. I'm like, oh my gosh, that is so cool. And Sheila, you should have seen your face when you're here with the My Math Lab, just going over to your gradebook, you're like this, oh my gosh. So, obviously, there are some features that several people are pretty excited about. The recording my voice, <laughs> I do talk a lot. So, recording my voice so a student can hear, I think that's pretty stinking cool. Um, and the drag calendar thing, oh my gosh. Click and move, oh, no drop downs, find the right date, edit it, <gasps> that's very exciting for me. Um, then automatically going over to the syllabus list as well. Holy moly, I'm so excited about this, this is great. Uh, so, <laughs> um, I wanna thank the distance learning team, thank you so much, and unbeknownst to you guys, I did speak with Jonathan a little bit ago, uh, earlier in the week, because I know not all adjuncts can get here, on a, th on a Thursday night, and some like I work at night and whatnot, and so, and the development days. So the time between when semester ends and semester starts, I would like to try to work with you guys to find a, like a day or two days to offer morning, afternoon, and evening. So for adjuncts who aren't teaching at that moment, they could hit those up with some training. So you have the laptop set up like you would have on December fifteenth. So I think there might be a big push for that with adjuncts as well, and I, I didn't think you'd be against it. So. Not to put you on the spot right here in front of everybody, but is that good? <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you for that. Um, so thank you so much, Distance Learning Team. I would like to thank um, Mark and Carrie, and I'd like to thank Helen and Bethany as well for sharing the information. There are things that I didn't know about, so that's exciting as well. I also want to always, always thank Marsha and Jonathan for this opportunity. I'm, in, I'm enjoying this. I am interested in just some feedback. So I think what I'm going to do to make it easier on everyone um, is I'm, I can't send out a mass email because, because of me. That's who I am. I can't send out one to everybody. So Marianne Littell creates them and she sends them on my behalf. So I'm going to send her an email and ask her to send it out to you guys for some feedback on the evening. I heard some good things about the food, so that's exciting. The pie selection was good. So that's encouraging to hear. Um, anything you have, anything else you might be interested in, maybe at a spring symposium, information you received here, and just anything, good, bad, ugly, um, so we can make evenings like this more frequent or evenings like this more productive for everyone who's here because I know it is virtually outside. And thank you again so much for coming to, to learn. So look for the email sometime tomorrow. Um, and I, it's like you guys were fast. We were ahead of schedule. So... I was in my class, well, I'm sure you're all really upset. We're going to get out a little bit early today. So unless there's something else, y'all are free to leave. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Thank you.